morning, everyone. It's very good to see all your faces, all you human beings and all creatures great and small who are also joining us on camera. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in Lent from St. John's Episcopal Church. And wherever you're joining us from, we're glad you're here. I have just a couple of announcements before the ringing of the bell and our voluntary. Uh, this week at uh, 1215 on Wednesday, uh, we will have another outdoor stations of the cross. And I invite you to join us for that. And uh, it's helpful if you can sign up online ahead of time, um, since we have a limit of 10 participants for each of those. And also just a heads up that in a couple of weeks, we will have another uh, drop off for our hotel amenities ministry. But this month, uh, during the season of Lent, we will also be at the same time having a food drive for uh, the Good Samaritan Food Pantry and uh, for um, um, a One Acre Cafe. Um, so we'll give you more detail about the needs there uh, in this next week so that you can participate in that. And now I invite you just to Take a moment to center yourselves for worship together this morning.
God's mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. pray. Almighty God, 
you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of Exodus. And God spoke these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol, rather in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that it is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the seventh, the Sabbath, and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving to you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning, I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. We proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. How long will it take? When we decided to toll the bell, the tower bell, 500 times last week, that was the question people ask most often. How long will it take? As it turned out, not as long as we estimated. And for me, not as long as I wanted the ringing to go on. I could have listened to that bell ring for a long time, carving out a moment of sound and recognition for every 1,000 people we had lost who had died. Of course, there's no way to comprehend even the loss of one beloved person, as so many of us know, however they died. And the only way to comprehend the lost is to take measure of the gifts they left behind and to tell the stories of their lives. And so last week when we were trying to comprehend 500,000, I found myself listening to stories about a few and trying to sit with the loss of just one. And the radio had a series called Songs of Remembrance, listening to songs a person had loved and the story behind it. And one woman wrote in about her dad, Tom McCoskey, who died in June at the age of 66. He was a great lover of music his daughter said. He played in a band all the years of his youth. And he is the reason that I love music and playing instruments. We were always really close, but he had this particularly special bond with my daughter, with his granddaughter. And from the time she could walk, they'd be in the garage listening to everything from Frankie Valley to the Four Seasons to Steppenwolf. But one song and band was particularly special to them. Happy Together by the Turtles. They played and danced to that song repeatedly for many years. Me and you and you and me sums up their relationship. They were inseparable and happy together. And skies were bluer when he was with her. 
When I hear happy together, she said, I'm reminded of a day when my daughter was about two. She wanted to run in the rain, but no one else did. No one else would go with her except my dad. When he said yes, they began running in and out of the garage, in and out of the rain, drenched and foolish. Of all the stories she could have told, Tom McCoskey's daughter remembered this one first and best. Her dad running in and out of the rain, drenched and foolish with the child he loved. She remembered best his foolishness for the child he loved and to whom he had said yes. Foolish. That's what Paul is talking about. The foolishness of God. And the foolishness of God is better than anything else in the world. And God is at his best and most memorable when God is most foolish. And foolishness is the heart of the gospel and of salvation. That's how Paul describes it, the foolishness of the cross, the foolishness of God, who will not only run in and out of the rain, but will run headlong into suffering and weakness and helplessness and dying and death to be with us, drenched and foolish for the children he loves. From time to time, you and I should acknowledge how odd and foolish our faith can sound. That we proclaim salvation by the arrest and humiliation and death of a poor Jewish man who had no place to lay his head. I preach nothing but Christ crucified, said Paul. And Christ crucified did not make very much sense to a lot of people. I come to you, Paul said to the church in Corinth, I come to you shaking and scared and feeling rather weak. Because Paul had just come from Athens, the cultural center of the world, a beautiful city, and he had stood on a hill and preached to them about Jesus and they had laughed at him. Such a fool, babbling about a crucified Messiah who died looking like a fool and a failure because, because he wanted to be near and wanted to be in everything, in every part of human life, just because he loved us. They were not impressed, nor convinced. They were not that foolish. The day my sister called to tell me that my mother had died early that morning, I was packing my bags to go see her, my mother in St. Louis. And I was on receiving the news so distraught that I had not decided to go see her sooner and that I had not seen her that one last time and had not been there when she died. Six months later, my sister called to tell me that my dad had fallen and had bleeding on his brain, but it didn't look too serious. I dawdled in Burlington, Vermont a little while, wondering when I should go. And then she called to say that the bleeding was worse than they thought, and there was nothing medically that they could do. And though he was still breathing on his own, he would not last very long. And I asked my sister to hold off on any morphine or anything else that would 
hasten his death unless he was in pain or distress because I wanted more than anything to be there. Sometimes just being there is our greatest desire, though in some sense, it seems to make no difference at all. It's not easy to get quickly from Burlington, Vermont to St. Louis in the middle of the winter but I was able to get a very early flight and arrived at the hospital in St. Louis around nine o'clock in the morning. My dad was unconscious, but still breathing and alive. And the doctor told me how glad he was that I had arrived in time. In time. I stood by the bed and held my dad's hand and then I laid my cheek against his chest, my ear against his breastbone. I felt his chest rise and fall, rise and fall. I had no desire to move. I just stayed there. The gaps between each breath grew longer, then longer still. And for 45 minutes, I lay like that with my cheek and my ear against his chest to be as close as I could and feel every last breath of this man that I loved and who I think in his life had been foolish for me. All of us have been there or not been there, but we all know that desire in some form for some reason just to be there wherever there is for those unnameable gifts that pass between us when we do, when we are there. Jack Casey is a volunteer fireman and paramedic. As a child, he had to have several teeth extracted under general anesthesia. He was terrified that day, but a nurse standing nearby said to him, don't worry, I'll be right here beside you the whole time, no matter what happens. And when he woke up from surgery, she had kept her word and was still standing beside him. That experience lodged in his bones. 20 years later, his ambulance crew was called to the scene of a serious accident. The driver was pinned upside down in his pickup truck and Jack crawled inside to try to get him out of the wreckage. Gasoline dripped over both of them. Power tools were needed to get him out and there was a great risk of fire and explosion. The driver was crying. He was scared. He was terrified of dying. And Jack kept saying to him what the nurse had told him so many years before. Don't worry, I'm right here with you. And I'm not going anywhere. After the truck driver had been rescued, he said to Jack, you were an idiot. You were a fool. The whole thing could have blown up and both of us would have been burned. It made no sense. But Jack knew in his bones that he could not leave. He had no desire to be anywhere else and no desire to move. He just stayed there. How foolish it was 
but in the moment, it was the most necessary gift to give to the one who gave it and the most necessary gift to receive from the one who received it. Not many of us are wise. Not many of us feel very strong very often. But God chooses what is weak and foolish in the world. Jesus himself did not have to stay in Jerusalem when the going got rough. He could have slipped back home to Nazareth to slip away or stay so perilously close just to be with us in all the suffering and fear and peril and anguish and last breaths of our lives. To go or stay, that was his last temptation. Why don't I just go back to Nazareth and have a family and take up carpentry again? and get out of this while I can. But he had no greater desire than to be in everything with us. And the only way we can comprehend the loss of this one foolish death is to take measure of the gifts that pass between us. What the cross teaches us and shows us is that it takes a lot of courage sometimes just to be there. Why did he do it? He did it for love. And what the cross shows us is that sometimes it takes a lot of courage to trust in the power of love. Sometimes we want more, another kind of power, a different, better kind of power. But the cross tells us that's all there is, and that is our salvation. When we make the sign of the cross, we receive the gift of God's foolish and perilous love, God's desire to be with us. And the sign of the cross is also our prayer to be fools ourselves, greater fools than we already are, who do things that make no sense except in the name of love and for the sake of the gifts that pass between us when we do. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Faithful God of love, you blessed us with your servant son so that we might know how to serve your people with justice and with mercy. We gather the needs of ourselves and others and offer them to you in faith and love, seeking to be strengthened to meet them. For the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness, it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all in danger that they may be relieved and protected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. We pray for all on our parish prayer list. Kitty, Amanda, Shirley, Alice, Linda, Steve, John, Ray, David, Sophie, Gary, Tim, Mary Catherine, Evelyn, Ed and Charlene, Stacy, Carolyn, Becky, Peg, Jennifer, Bob, Abele, Bill, Karen, Edith, Judy. We pray for Artie, friend of Mary Alice and Bill Fryer. Pray for Gary Jr., Parker and Jessica, for Kim and Perezza, Veronica, Amanda and Jack. We pray for the repose of the stole, soul of Stacy Newby, the daughter-in-law of Christine Newby, for Kathleen. Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For those whom we have injured or offended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, let us pray to the Father. 
Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. In communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. We offer also this morning our prayers of celebration and thanksgiving. And we give thanks especially for all those who celebrate birthdays this week. Margot Humby, Renaud Duberly, Joan Lancaster, Phil Ulmer, Donna Winton, and Bruce Donaldson. Watch over these your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall. And in their heart, may the peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I invite your other prayers of thanksgiving, spoken aloud or in chat or silently at this time. For all of those who have gone before us, especially Thomas and Charles. Thanks for the beauty of God's creation and pray that we may care for it with truly thankful hearts. I give thanks for all the people of St. John's. Be with us, Lord, in our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation. That among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We gather in Christ's name and share Christ's peace. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and with, also with peace.
as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Together we give thanks. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Look mercifully on this, your family, almighty God, that by your great goodness, they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go Let first us go. in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. God.